so um, I'm going to use some technology tonight to show you how you could present in a virtual setup and uh, present with the analog tools and uh, that's the topic of the uh, presentation so how can you do that in a remote world and the presentation itself is a testimony to that i'm showing you how you can do that and we're talking about uh, it at the same time so it's not anything abstract and um, i will tell you how i do that and what is the technology behind it and i will tell a few tricks about how you could improve not only the presentation part but also facilitation and um, how you can make meetings and uh, remote sessions with your colleagues more engaging by using analog tools and um, the first thing I'm going to talk about is the materials that we're using today, uh, today tonight, uh, tonight, tonight, today. And uh, the, the, the tools I'm going to use are sticky notes. And if you have some by your side, uh, just uh, use them. Um, we will use some paper, just regular A4 paper. I have a, a, a whole stack of those with me different types of pens. I normally use a lot of different pens. I'm, I'm really nerdy about pens. I have uh, Neuland pens, I have other types of brands, and I just, you know, I just uh, switch and uh, mix and match and experiment all the time. I just love that stuff. I buy a lot of markers and pens and I and I'm, I'm a big fan of analog actually. That's why we chose this topic uh, today because I think uh, a lot of people appreciate and recognize the benefits of uh, feel and touch of real stuff of paper and you know having that sound and the friction and a lot of people also draw digitally but people who draw digitally they have no problem integrating into remote work because you could just share and um, join the virtual me meetings with the digital tools uh, so much easier but people who are so attached and uh, so fascinated with the physical tools uh, have a huge barrier so uh, my ambition tonight is to talk about how you can onboard your physical tools in the uh, virtual realm and um, I don't want to exclude those of you who are digital nomads. If you draw digitally with a tablet, iPad and whatnot, please uh, still stay with us and uh, listen to those tips and tricks because maybe you could still reuse something when you draw digitally, not necessarily you have uh, to use analog tools. But if you do use, I, I, I plan to show you some tips and tricks uh, to get uh, it easier for you to onboard into a virtual work. And a few words about me. And I also, I, I'm repeating myself, uh, of course, but I'm doing that because I want to show you how you could basically present uh, yourself or present any topic while drawing, right? So that's just a demonstration of the method as well. My name is Yuri. I love t-shirts. Right now I'm wearing this uh, fantastic t-shirt from Micro, the ideas, not art. And I really stand by that statement because we draw to be clear and to communicate better, be better understood, have more fun. And if we know how to draw nicely, well, that's a bonus. If not, we, we should not feel bad about it because as long as we can effectively communicate, uh, then I think there is a value in that alone. Um, so a few facts about myself. I hail from Ukraine. That's a country in the Eastern European region. And uh, I moved to Denmark uh, four years ago. And I live here in Copenhagen with my family. What I do in my job, I am an agile coach. What that means, if you haven't heard that term before, that means that I'm helping software development teams and organizations create a better product. 
a better product as in mobile application, web application, whatever technology that uh, you might be using today on your smartphones or on your laptops in order to achieve your goals, that, that, that kind of products. And we, we, we create products um, in the financing industry. I work for a bank and um, it's, it's a tough job to create products that solve um, problems of customers. And I love my job. And at the same time, I think of myself as, as a person with a visual twist, meaning that I like to think about stuff and well, when I think about stuff, I draw that stuff out and that allows me to clarify things and uh, cope with complexity and stress much better because I think faster, I, I think I can communicate better if I draw things out and uh, that's my passion as well, visual thinking. That's what unites us tonight. I think you are of, of the same nature here. So a few facts about me. But also, I'll just stop here and uh, repeat myself. This presentation is about uh, using visuals, but also the presentation itself is a demo of the method. And here uh, you can learn that a slide, in, in this case, a piece of paper can be pre-drawn and that way you can reduce the stress of uh, drawing and and talking at the same time, leaving out only annotations for later, which is so much easier to do. And you don't have to remember what you have to talk about uh, beforehand because you have a prepared parts on your slides, so to speak. You just need to get, get more details on it. It's less stressful. So I'm not stressed at the moment whatsoever because I, I am not afraid to forget anything. I have everything here, right? So just, just a pro tip. Let's move on to uh, the question of what did we lose because of this nasty guy here. Remember a year ago, right? This guy from, from hell <laughs> stricken us. And suddenly we lost all of the good stuff we enjoyed. We lost the possibility to talk to our colleagues standing next to a whiteboard and drawing the diagrams, expressing ourselves, arriving to solutions faster. Because it is so really cool to just grab a marker and say, hey, let's go and uh, join an ad hoc meeting in that meeting room. I'll explain myself. I'll draw it quickly for you. You will understand how this process works. And then you will help me understand what I'm lacking, right? It's not available anymore. You cannot do that. Whiteboards are in the office. Colleagues are sitting uh, somewhere in their homes. And um, it's not available anymore. Or maybe you are a trainer and you used to use a flip chart for, for an audience and explain your points while talking and creating a lot of cool flip charts, putting them on the wall and at the end of the day you would have a full overview of your training program and you could refer to those slides from before and, and stuff like that. I used to do that a lot as well, so I, I feel you, if it hurts you, you cannot do that anymore. That was really cool, but again, that's something we cannot do because we cannot pr be present in the same room physically. And also, if you, if you are a leader, a manager, a coach, and you used to grab a piece of paper and, and uh, call up your colleague to have a chat over coffee, and then you would discuss something, drawing on a piece of paper, asking questions, and just sketching these things down so that a person who is uh, having a chat with you could have a look and say, yeah, that's exactly what I'm talking about, or no, uh, you're missing this point here, and have meaningful conversations just like that. We, we, again, lost all of this. And especially people who used to admire f physical analog tools, suddenly it's not available anymore. 
it's it's painful and you're sitting back home and uh, you have those zoom calls all day it drives you crazy and and every time you struggle to explain something you realize they don't see it right they they can only see your face so you feel like numb like a numb person who cannot express themselves because they cannot have access to a piece of paper they cannot be physically close to each other and it's really painful and at the same time there are things you can still do even though you have those severe limitations first of all what what does a work look like today well most probably you're sitting back home and uh, using your laptop and your headset and you're having a conversation over i don't know uh, maybe a zoom call maybe microsoft teams maybe hangout doesn't really matter but still there are ways for you to integrate your analog drawings in your virtual electronic conversations. And I'll just list out a few options for you. So what was that? Hangouts. I'll go through the possibilities that uh, you didn't think about or didn't use to a full extent yet. And uh, my ambition is to inspire you to reconsider these options and enrich your virtual experience by including those possibilities in the menu of what you could do. So first of all, and it's really, really simple. Let's say you're stuck in a situation, something uh, which you're working on is so complex that you understand that it will take forever to exchange chat, emails, or even you cannot nail it just by talking. You need to show it. What you could do is, to, is grab a piece of paper and draw a diagram explaining your point, annotating, uh, sketching, externalizing the complexity into a two-dimensional picture. Take a snapshot with your, with your smartphone, and we know you can do that because uh, you sent a lot of uh, warm-up pictures into that Padlet just earlier. So we know you can do that. Just take a picture and email it to your colleague. Just send an email. And then ask that person, can you open that picture for me? And just start referring to that picture in your conversation. That alone can broaden the spectrum of your possibilities communicating clearer. Also, that person could just use uh, Microsoft Paint or something really primitive to mark it up and return it to you. You could collaborate on a visual artifact. So... Don't forget, you can do that, and it's so easy to do. That picture will get into that laptop, and you will have a possibility to converse about these things. The, um, I will call it, um, I don't know, just uh, pictures, right? Pictures, number one. I didn't think about <laughs> how to properly name these options, so I will be coming up with something maybe not very precise but as long as you understand me it's, it's okay the second option is that normally when you talk to your colleagues you have a video conversation like like we do like we have right now meaning that if you turned on a camera you can show stuff you can hold that thing to a camera right basically you drew this thingy and you just you, you can just hold it to the camera and move your fingers around saying, hey, I'm talking about this. Do you follow me? And use your fingers, right? But not only that, and I'm, I'm talking about a facilitation situation. Let's say you have a meeting with a lot of people and you don't know, do you talk too fast or do you move too slow through the material? Do they understand you? You could use a really simple technique, and that's where the sticky notes come into play. You could ask people to quickly draw on a piece of paper or, or on a sticky note if they have some at their home. You could ask them to create some visual clues. 
so that it's easier to quickly share what's going on, right? And if you, if you are presenting a very complex idea and you're going through slides and pictures, but you don't really know if the engagement is there, you could ask them before the meeting starts, guys, can you quickly draw these two pictures for me? And it's okay if you don't have sticky notes of nice colors, just draw that on a piece of paper. Everyone has a piece of paper back home. I'm quite sure about that. And then you have um, a rule agreed that if, if you're moving uh, too fast, you will ask them, can you hold it next to the camera and let me know that you're moving too, uh, too fast. I cannot cope cope with the pace. I'm not following, right? And they don't even need to unmute themselves. And it's so engaging because people will understand that some physicality is happening, right? So suddenly this physical enters the realm of virtual and it feels better and it's something different. So you don't feel like you're you're just some kind of a virtual voice in the void. You feel yourself a person. And the same is, is like, all good. And people are like, yes, all good. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, using the green uh, sticky note was a bad idea. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you why later. Maybe you already guessed why. So, so just use different types of props. Show your drawing to a camera. Don't be shy. Be brave to do that. Engage with the people by showing what is critical for you to demonstrate. And also, sometimes it's fun to be a bit foolish. I'll show you some props I have designed for facilitating events. I, I just basically found some troll faces on the internet, drew them on the A4 paper, cut out with scissors, I used some um, not needed anymore card, uh, cardboard boxes, glue those faces on those, and use the grill stick to, to create a, a prop like this. So now the way it works, if I want just to have fun and just warm up and, and you know, show it, it's okay to be uh, fooling around sometimes, you can just bring it to your face once in a while. And I'm not saying that you should use troll faces, but just think about all different possibilities you could use in the meeting. Different visual props that are physical, analog, but they can really color up the experience for everyone. It could be actually a team building exercise. Offer to your team or colleagues spend 30 minutes to craft a face. And it doesn't take long to do that. All you need to have is some cardboard, a grill stick or similar, um, some glue and pens to draw a, a funny face, a funny, silly face. That could be an idea for a team building exercise. So all sorts of, all sorts of stuff, right? So that's the other way of introducing physicality. Show stuff. Show stuff and could also be all types of props props etc and i i can assure you people appreciate that they will they will feel different in that type of meeting something happens that is different and people remember that and it increases engagement reduces the fatigue of people through the day all right, next thing is, I don't know, probably by now all of the people learned about those fancy virtual backgrounds. Most of the applications allow that. Um, at least Zoom and Teams definitely allow you using some virtual backgrounds. I'm not sure about Hangouts, maybe that's also possible there, but in Zoom and Teams you could do that. Imagine that you pre-draw pre -draw a few uh, important pictures up front and upload them into Zoom or Teams as virtual backgrounds. And during the session, you could change the virtual background. And that's not the same as showing the slides, but maybe to set the, the mood. For example, right now we're talking about our organization design. 
and uh, put a picture of the organizational design you drew prior to the workshop as a virtual background. Definitely that will turn heads and increase the uh, attention and engagement. You could do that, right? So we need to use all of the possibilities of the technology. Yes, technology limits us, as I said, because of uh, the way we work, we cannot go into a meeting room and use the whiteboards. But instead of just fixating on what we lost, let's explore a little better what we gained, right? We have virtual backgrounds. Okay, let's be creative. Let's get creative. Let's think about how we could use those, right? And that is just one of uh, the examples. And I'm not saying that you should show slides there. I'm just saying that think about it. That's a possibility. What, what can you use it for? And I've heard stories about um, facilitators who asked people to prepare backgrounds of certain colors. And they asked people to change uh, backgrounds uh, like green to red to orange to express their moods during a workshop so that they could easily see where the group is. Just an idea again. Next up is all sorts of virtual whiteboards. I'm talking about applications like Miro, Mural, those kinds of applications. And if you haven't worked with those before, uh, what that is, is it is a collaborative tool that allows people to log into the same virtual space and start creating virtual sticky notes, connect them together, upload pictures of themselves, uh, upload any type of picture. And the good thing about it is that while people are working on this document, they do that concurrently. So it's not like I I did I made some changes, I saved the document and send it over to you. People can see how their cursors are moving around and you can collaborate. And most of the time when people start using a virtual uh, whiteboard, like the ones I mentioned, they just uh, stick to the standard tools. They would only use the virtual sticky notes and connect them into mind maps, which is cool just like that but again remember you can draw physically because uh, that's our assumption that uh, we want to learn how how can we integrate the analog drawing into the virtual world so that's what you prefer so why don't you just take a picture with the same smartphone and upload this diagram into your mirror board and for example you could draw some kind of a canvas or template and upload it into uh, your mirror board and ask people to start placing sticky notes over this template, right? You can do that. It's easy. Just integrate your drawings as pictures inside of a virtual whiteboard. It's a possibility. And finally, that is probably the most difficult to organize, but definitely is worth a try. That's what I'm doing right now draw live that will require some technology investment and some skill training as well but that is to date the most engaging way to have a meaningful conversation with people that's what i'm doing with you right now i've i figured out an approach that works for me i found out how to make sure that you could still see me so if i smile you can see me and you have a human connection with me as much as it's possible in the virtual setup and at the same time i can send you a clear picture of what i'm doing so i could draw and explain complex topics to you this is a complex topic but uh, i like to think that i made it simpler by just having a clear drawing about this um, uh, this situation so draw and um yeah draw and broadcast basically And I will show you how to do that. But uh, before demonstrating the technology I'm using for this one, I want to show you um, how underrated uh, the method of uploading the photographs of hand drawing diagrams is. Mm, I show you. I'll show you something that always uh, 
always amazes people. So I'm switching to my um, to my desktop right now. So we'll, bear with me. I just need some transitional time here. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Hold on. <laughs> I'll need a few moments more. Okay, so uh, how about that? Can you see my screen on my desktop now? Awesome. What I'm showing you is Google Slides. It's the application for creating presentation slides. And it is very similar to OneNote, Microsoft PowerPoint, pretty much the same set of uh, features. I just chose this one because it's easier for me to show it to you. But uh, what I'm going to show you is available across all presentation uh, software programs. Remember, I mentioned to you that you could use your hand drawing images uh, to bring your presentations to the next level. What they meant is that you take a picture of your drawing and you can see me holding a picture of a unicorn, then you insert that into the slide and after a few modifications you can get a slide looking like this, right? And it's so easy to do with just the built-in features of uh, any presentation software you are using, be it Google Slides or Microsoft PowerPoint, doesn't really matter. The way it works is that you do two things basically. You find a tool responsible for cropping images, and I tell you, every presentation software has a tool for cropping images. And you crop out all the stuff you don't need. Unfortunately, the way I held the picture, I cannot crop out my finger. But that's okay, because maybe it's even nicer that way. Then you resize and locate where you want it on the slide. And then you find the next step is brightness and contrast adjustment. And again, I tell you, that's a standard feature of any presentation software. So you find the settings for brightness and contrast. And normally, all you need to do is just to increase brightness and maybe slightly increase contrast. And in a, in a split moment, it doesn't take long, normally just two steps, you get a slide looking like that. Isn't that amazing? In another example, that's a snapshot of a drawn picture I used in my presentation last week. So you take a picture of a complicated diagram. Let's say you need to explain something for your colleagues, how your process works, and you quickly draw with, uh, with a lot of elements and colors. You do the same. You crop you resize, you adjust brightness and contrast, and suddenly you have a picture looking like an illustration. And it's so easy to do. Just draw it on paper, take a snapshot, insert that into your PowerPoint slide, crop out what you don't need, resize, and then adjust brightness and contrast. It's so simple. A lot of people don't know they can do that because they, they think there is a lot of Photoshop instance between them and a the good uh, result. But it, the only thing is that they don't know that all of these features are readily available and, is, and are so easy to use. So I hope that it encourages you to start doing something like that. Draw a diagram. That would be the very first step. Then grab your smartphone and snap a picture of it, right? snapshot then take that picture in insert inside of your presentation slide insert then find that I forgot the icon let me look it up really quickly um, yeah how does that okay it it looks like this so um, 
yeah, crop out what you don't need. So for example, you know, if uh, you need to center that better or something like that. So crop. And then, of course, resize if necessary. And then finally, the final step. Now it's a step number five. Find those sliders somewhere. I cannot tell you where because it really depends on, uh, on the program. One slider is for brightness and another one is for contrast. That's what you're looking for. So brightness and contrast. Find those two guys and adjust the levels. Normally you just need to push them uh, very much to the right for brightness and just slightly a bit uh, for contrast to the right, increasing those values. And uh, that will drop all of that unnecessary shadow so it looks like a digital drawing. That's how I do that. Awesome. Yeah, and now we have a diagram for that. I'm a big fan of diagrams, visual manuals. Uh, you probably guessed that by now. <laughs> anyway, let's move on then. Because I... Manga tak. Yes, it, it means... Feel uh, dank. <laughs> if I pronounce that close enough. <laughs> Good. So now we're talking about the, the setup, something that you are the most eager to learn about. Well, it's a combination of software and um, um, hardware. I will start with the most critical hardware components. The most critical hardware component, number one, is the camera, which is used to project and broadcast what I'm drawing on, on the tabletop. In my case, and it can be any type of camera, it could be a web camera, just a regular one, but in my case, I, after a lot of experimentation, trying out web cameras, document cameras, I settled with an iPhone. And the major reason is that they have this built-in feature responsible for adjusting light in a very good way. So the quality of the picture is much better compared to most document cameras and web cameras. It is just better. So I'm not saying it must be an iPhone, but it's my setup and uh, something that works really well for me now. It can be any type of camera. In my case, it's an iPhone for the reason I described. Now, you cannot just connect an iPhone to a computer, which is the component number two. You need a computer, a laptop computer in my case. You need to connect it to a computer, but you cannot just stick a, a charging cable into it. It doesn't work like that. So in order to connect it to a computer, you need now a third critical component, which is a device called HDMI card dongle. And they, uh, they can be of different brands and, and uh, models. The one I am using is called Elgato Cam Link. It's more on the expensive side of the devices of this class, but it also suggests uh, full HD and um, a lot of built-in quality features. So, so on the quality side, it's also top-notch device. And if you're serious about uh, broadcasting and recording videos, you don't want to compromise quality. I'm not recommending you, just you, and I'm not saying you have to use that with an iPhone and a, a cam link. But again, I figured out for me, it was the best combination on the quality side. So what you do is that you stick this guy into a computer and you connect uh, through the USB. It's a USB dongle. And then you connect that with the HDMI cable to your iPhone or uh, whatever camera you use. You don't need a HDMI card with the web camera. A web camera usually just connects with the USB. 
but since I'm using an iPhone, I need a HDMI cable and I need that uh, a special type of um, what it's called. Uh, I forgot the name. Well, basically the uh, iPhone to HDMI cable adapter. So, so you also need an adapter, of course, but that's a minor detail. So you connect your iPhone through this HDMI card into your computer and suddenly your computer recognizes that iPhone is a web camera, which is pretty cool. But then somehow you need to show your face and your tabletop on the same screen. How do you do that? That's where this guy comes in and that is the application called Mm-hmm. And, and I, I kid you not, that's the name of the application. Mm -hmm. M -m -h -m -m dot A -p -p. Mm -hmm. So you install that program on your computer. And in that program, what happens is that you tell the program, okay, I want to use uh, this camera, the integrated camera, for example, as my face camera. And then I want to send the picture from uh, my other camera and use that as a background. And what mm -hmm does is that it um, um, imposes your picture on top of what uh, you see from this camera. So they create this, this application creates a layered uh, composition of these two cameras. And on top of it, this application creates this composition as a virtual webcam. What does that mean? Well, that means that when you go into your Zoom session, inside of the drop-down menu where you select your camera, now you can select mm -hmm as one of the options. And it's so easy. You don't have to be a software programmer to do that. You install mm -hmm, you choose the, the cameras which you want to compose into one video and then inside of your zoom call for example in the drop down menu you choose mm -hmm application as the source for your camera that's all you need to do and mm -hmm comes with different sliders and adjustments allowing you to do things like that that allow you to for example change the size of one camera feed versus another one. So you could do like this, right? Then you could do like this. You can just grab, drag yourself around. You could just flow around the picture. And this is happening because right now I selected the camera feed and I hold my finger against the touchpad and I'm just moving myself around. Right, like I'm flying, I'm flying. So that that's just that's just the stuff I'm doing right now inside of mm -hmm application. And they have more more interesting features. You could, for example, dissolve yourself by adjusting the level of transparency, and like ah, I'm disappearing. Ah, ah. Yes, and I'm back. So all all sorts of different things you could do, but I I normally don't do that. <laughs> Because I don't need that. What I need is that I want you to see me there, there, and I want you to see this. That's all I'm using M mm -hmm for. And on top of this, M mm -hmm allows you to record that video feed so that you could share your um, presentations later with someone else, for example, through YouTube. Now, more important, maybe less critical components, but really important to the quality of the output. Um, the headset, to ensure there will be no echo or no problem with, um, with organizing uh, the sound flow back and forth. I also am a believer of quality, so I invested in a separate microphone and that's the one I'm using, but again, guys, it's not uh, how you need to do that. I'm just sharing uh, the particular 
elements of my uh, of my setup with you but it can be any other type of a microphone there are so many different good ones um also it's important to use proper light right now i use three sources of light i have uh, two led sources of light standing on my desktop and if i change uh, my background you can see a photograph of my setup and i'll switch to a pointer another feature that mm -hmm, supports that i can move around and show stuff so you can see one led matrix on my right side and another led matrix on my left side so that they direct nice light from two directions here at the center of uh, the table why do i need that it's because guys when you see my hands on the table there are no hard shadows you can see there are shadows but they're soft and nice to your eye that's why you need two sources of light coming from both sides so led two of them and also you can see that i'm transparent in that in a way that you don't see the background around me right um, that is achieved because there is a green screen behind me chroma key so-called chroma key i put it behind me so that mm -hmm, the application i'm using to compose the video in one can um, easily calculate the background out of the picture so it's just for the algorithm to work better and i have the third uh, led light to make sure that as the green screen is lit um what do you call it in in the homogeneous way right so that there are no hard shadows preventing the algorithm to work properly um yeah so that concludes the setup